Last Breath is a biometric portrait. It's basically a piece that captures the breath of a person um, in a respirator device, like a mechanical bellows, which um, moves the breath of the person between the bellows and a brown paper bag. The brown paper bag inflates and deflates um, to simulate the normal respiratory frequency of an adult at rest. And the whole idea of the piece is that by capturing the breath of this one person, you create a sort of memorial to that ephemeral moment of breathing. The person who is portrayed, once he or she dies, people can actually visit their last breath, which is still circulating in the machine. So it's kind of um, a piece that is partly medical, partly biometric, but also kind of this impossible and romantic attempt to capture presence. So the piece consists of um, basically three elements. The first element is a respirator. It's um, basically a motor that is constantly actuating uh, bellows. We care about showing the elements that actually make the piece work, as opposed to hiding it in the back and just pretending it's magic. The idea is that there's nothing hidden that you can see into this intangible thing, which is the breath. And then the second element is an actual set of tubes uh, and a brown paper bag that's connected to these tubes. The tubes are respiration tubes from medical apparatus to spread the sound and the air between the bellows and the brown paper bag. The third element is a video showing the person holding onto the bag and breathing into the bag. The project itself is a platform. It's a platform that can be inhabited by different people. It's a portrait. And in this case, this is the last breath from Pauline Oliveros, who is originally a Texan composer, a vanguard composer, but who was very influential in San Francisco for new music. And one of the interesting things about Pauline is she's a composer but an accordionist. So all of her life has been related to the bellows and to this airflow. So we record only one breath and one exhalation, and we ask for this exhalation to, to be very full because the bag contains a lot, of, um, a lot of air. So the paper bags we use are um, not normal paper bags. They are actually um, coated with plastic inside. These are paper bags that are used to take uh, fried chicken or something that is juicy so that it's not going to leak. But the device itself has a little button that allows you to change the person who is portrayed in the machine. So now you have Pauline and she is in a bag. In the future, if you find somebody else that you want to memorialize in this way, you make them breathe into the bag. You press the special button that is recessed into it. And what happens is all of Pauline's breath goes into this one bag. Then you can close it and store it. That's her breath. And now you can put another person which is, in a way, I say ironic because when we think about what are our own rights as a culture with the dead, right? Like we keep a, a little pot. My father and my mother are both like ashes now, you know, in a little bowl. So this idea of containing a life into this little thing is related to, to certain kind of cultural rights of death. Um, and so, in that sense, this piece is also a commentary on the culture of conservation, right? On vampirism, on necrophilia, on the desire to keep alive something that we have now lost. 